There's a lot of misconceptions surrounding bats. It's a, a group of species that are active at night and we generally can't hear them. So when we can't hear things and can't see things, um, they are often misunderstood. They're just so fascinating because they're, they are a difficult group of animals to study uh, because they're active at night and because we can't hear them. It's not like bird watching where we can see and hear them during the day. There's not one one method to really uh, be able to understand bats or get it, whatever your study objectives are. Typically, we, if we're capturing bats, we use mist nets and they're fine gauge nets that we spread over a water source. And not all bats are equally capturable in nets. We can also survey bats using acoustic devices like this Anabat that records their ultrasonic echolocations that are above the range of human hearing. But not all bats are easily detected on uh, acoustics either. So any typical bat survey usually has to involve more than one survey method and it's typically capture and acoustics. When a bat is captured in the net we carefully extract it and this is done by professional trained biologists and um, we then look for what species it is, uh, what the sex is, what the age is, and what its reproductive status is. Whether it's um, possibly pregnant or post-lactating, that sort of thing. We trapped at Locks Ranch for three nights last week and we captured 10 species, uh, about almost 130 captures, individual bats of 10 different species, but the most amazing thing was, was that we captured two spotted bats. The spotted bat has been considered maybe one of the rarest animals in North America. However, we're now learning that it might be a little bit more common. For a little background, the spotted bat was first described in 1891, but there wasn't a live capture of one of those spe of that species until the 1960s. And I believe that in Nevada, work that's been done by Endow in the past few decades has yielded only four spotted bat captures, and two of them were last week. They tend to be solitary, so when you have solitary bats, uh, how do I describe this? If we have like the canyon bat, we may capture 50 canyon bats in one night because there's a lot of canyon bats in the area. But solitary bats, like spotted bats, you may only have one available to be captured. So that's part of the reason why captures are probably low when it comes to spotted bats. Spotted bats are unmistakable. They are a relatively large bat. They have large pink ears and pinkish wings also. The body is mostly jet black, but with three large distinctive white spots on their back. You, you can't miss a spotted bat. There's nothing else to mistake it for. And the other interesting thing about spotted bats is it's one of, uh, one of few species that we can actually hear as humans because they echolocate within the range of human hearing. So it's one that we can hear out there if you know what you're listening for. I would say having a spotted bat in hand last week, in fact having two spotted bats, was probably one of the biggest highlights of my career so far. Catching a spotted bat or seeing a spotted bat, handling a spotted bat is probably the number one priority and goal of every bat biologist that I know.